Hello and welcome to Louise Singleton Creations. I have a quick midweek video for you today as promised in my last video. I'm going to be showing you how I adapted a cheap battery operated tea light to make it look more like a real candle in my resin candle vessel. If you're like me and you hate the way fake candles look but you really want to make resin candle vessels, stay tuned because this video could be of interest to you. My plan with one of these cheap battery operated candles is to make a cover for it to disguise it. I got these ones at ha Halloween time. I don't actually celebrate Halloween but I saw them in the shop and they were cheap and I thought they might be useful. So I've taken one out and painted it white. It it's not very well painted, it doesn't really need to be too well painted but I wanted to disguise the black so it didn't show through. So yeah, that's what I've done, I've painted it white and let me show you what I'm going to do with it next. As you can see, I have my resin candle pot here and my plastic tea light candle. And my plan is to pour resin over the top of the tea light candle so that the vessel looks like it's filled with wax. In order to do that, I needed to block all the empty space in the vessel, which I didn't want my UV resin to flow into. I just wanted it to go across the top. So I'm using my two-part silicon putty from Resin Pro. It's not essential to use this. I had it, so I'm using it because it did work really well for the idea I had. But you could use sand or you could use air dry clear while it's still wet. Anything to block that cavity that the UV resin won't stick to. So yeah, like I said, I had some of this and I knew it would work perfectly. So that's what I'm using. I'm weighing out part A and B equally. And then you just squeeze it all together and keep squeezing until the white and the blue are completely combined. And it's got no streaks in it. Then you know that it's thoroughly mixed. Once I'd done that, I pushed it into the candle vessel and made sure it was all squashed down and left a bit of a space in the middle to put my tea light into. And then I just kept, you know, manipulating it until it was all nice and smooth and level on the top. It's kind of hard to explain. You just have to watch. It's self-explanatory, really. Once I'd got it all smooth, I left it to cure. This eye gum paste cures in about 15 to 20 minutes. In fact, it might have been even quicker than that. I'm not sure. I can't remember, but it was really quick and it was ready. <laughs> OK, that's ready now. And I need to use some petroleum jelly just on the sides of the vessel. And that will just stop the resin from sticking to the resin vessel. I'm just using a paintbrush and painting it on and it worked a treat. So I'm going to be using UV resin just because it's nice and fast and it's ready in a few minutes. But if you don't have UV resin, that's fine. You can use epoxy resin. Use whatever you have. The same as like I said, when you were filling the vessel, you know, you didn't have to use what I've used. You could use sand or clay or whatever. Use your imagination. I'm just showing you the way I do it and maybe, you know, it will inspire you. <laughs> Right then, so I've got some J-Diction UV resin, my favourite resin. I always use this. I think it's brilliant. And I'm just pouring some into a silicon cup. I had to kind of guess how much I would need, but I made quite a good guess, really. I got it just about right. And then I added my mica powder. The colour I used is seashell and it's the mica powder from Let's Resin. It's one of my favourite colours. I really love this one. And just scooped a bit out and mixed it into the UV resin just in the same way as you would with epoxy resin. There is a slight difference with UV resin. Obviously, you're going to be curing it with UV light. And if you put too much pigment in, it will struggle to cure. The light just won't get all the way through and it won't cure properly. So just do be thoughtful of that if you're using UV resin. So once it was all mixed up, all I had to do was pour it on. 
And once I was happy with it, I put it under my UV light for about five minutes to make sure it was fully cured. After five minutes, I took it out and turned it upside down so that it could cure under the light from the bottom, just to make sure, you know, in case the light hadn't got all the way through, it was still a little bit um, tacky underneath. So by just turning it upside down, I was able to make sure everything was completely cured. I'd got some um, tacky resin on the mould still as well. So I just put that in there as well. And the little bits of resin that were on there can just be peeled off the mould. So that's why I put the mould under the light. Just look at the state of that light. You can tell I use it a lot, can't you? <laughs> Right, once it was completed, that should have been where I could just stop and it was done. But I found that I could still see the candle through it. So I did mix up a little bit more of the resin in exactly the same way as before. The only difference this time is I added a little bit of gold mica powder as well to make it a bit darker and I just put it on the top of what I'd already made I didn't put it back in the mold or anything like that I just did a top coat and then I couldn't see through it anymore but you probably won't have to do that if you get enough pigment in there in the first attempt so there we have it. It's all ready to go into the candle vessel, which I did clean up because it had all that petroleum jelly on it. I cleaned it up with some alcohol, but that's all I needed to do and it was fine. And as you can see, that just places in there and it looks a lot better, I think. Do you? What do you think? <laughs> I think it's miles better than just having the plastic tea light a candle in there. And, you know, once you've made that mould once, you can use it again and again and again for the same shaped pot. And, you know, it won't take so long next time. It'll be a nice, quick and easy job. So, yeah, that's the end of my quick and easy video for today. And I hope it's inspired you to have a go for yourself. So I will see you again next week. Thank you for watching and bye for now.